OK. Welcome, everyone. Here we are again. Um, another uh, wonderful, fun segment uh, with uh, Dimitri Moisev here. And Sakit Ahmed. Thank you, sir. Uh, both of us from Cameo Networks, uh, specifically on the EPMP uh, product line. And today, we are really excited because we're going to talk about one of the most anticipated features from the EPMP product line. Dimitri, drum rolls would be backwards. Yeah. SFP port. Ah, SFP port. No, no, no. <laughs> good one. We have a problem with the SFP. No, I'm just joking. Uh, backwards compatibility and forwards compatibility. Now, that's, that's a mouthful. That's hard to say. So we like to affectionately call it the BC and the FC. Mm -hmm. um, what we want to do today in this segment is, um, I don't know a whole lot, but I do know Dimitri does. And if I ask him a lot of questions, I can learn, and I'm hoping our audience can learn a whole lot about this uh, exciting feature. So let's start with this, Dimitri. Backwards compatibility. What is the scope of backwards compatibility? Right, so uh, even going slightly back, so yeah. we have these two words, backwards compatibility, forward compatibility, so what, basically what it means. Right. Why we came up with these confusing terms. So the backwards compatibility means that there's the new access point, which is EPMP 3000, 3000 right. 11 AC based thing, is talking to the 11 N subscribers, legacy subscribers. So that's the backwards compatibility. So okay. from the EPMP 3000 standpoint, that's the backwards compatibility with the previous clients. So that's one thing. Right. Forward compatibility thing, that's the EPMP 2000 talking with the new subscriber 11 AC base, like Force 300-25, Force 300-16. Gotcha. So if you want to connect those 11 AC subscribers to the EPMP 2000, you need forward compatibility thing. Okay. So that's all right. Digital. Thank you for that. So let's let's dive deep into the, the logistics of this. Um, first and foremost, we are anticipating the official release supporting backwards force compatibility in a few days. Today by being, the time people will watch this video. Right? Yeah, by the time the people watch this video, we should have it out. If I'm a customer and I go to the Cambium website, I will download a file that I will put on my 3000 series product. Okay, so from the EPMP 3000, yeah. the software that you have and the whole 11AC portfolio, it has the IMG uh, firmware extension, extension okay. for the firmware. And it is applicable for all the 11AC portfolio. All 11AC. One file for everything 11AC. Dot .IMG extension. Okay. That's correct. So the one that is coming uh, right now releasing is, soon that is released even for 3.1 it has the backward compatibility option that you have to turn on okay and it has a beta sign in 4.3.1 it has a beta sign when you turn it on okay 4.3.2 there are no any additional options you need so by default by default i don't have to click on any buttons okay okay absolutely right so you just load 4.3.2 on epmp 3000 and it will allow connecting 11 and subscribers. What a brilliant idea. But uh -oh. there is always a small There's always a but, okay. There is always a but. Uh, those clients, there is a requirement that we need to update those clients. Sure. So they have to go, they, they need to learn the new 11 AC language. Ah. So we have to update them from 3.5x firmware they were using before to the 4.3 release. And with the tar.gz extension. That's true. I do know something. All right, okay, so summary is for EPMP 3000 product line, it's a .img file extension. For anything legacy that you want to talk to the 3000 is the tar.gz extension. And the reason it took us some time to get this done is that we almost had to develop a new language because our whole solution is proprietary um, and we needed to make the AC stuff talk to the legacy stuff. If I move to forward compatibility, what is happening there? What do I put on my AP and what do I put on my new SMs? Okay, so more or less the same story. It's okay. a rule of thumb. If you want to talk any 11N with any 11AC, you need 4.3 firmware running on both of them. And the version that we are going to post is going to be 4.3.2 official? 4.3.2 for everything. For everything. 11N, 11AC. Different files, but the version number is the same. And Okay, so the, here's an interesting one, not to confuse or sidetrack, but this is important for me. If I have an elevated subscriber, mm -hmm. 
I guess I'm already running 3.5 release on this elevated subscriber, so I would not treat that any different. I would simply put the Tar.GZ 432. Yeah, so from EPMP 3000 standpoint, there is no difference. You go, download the same 4.3 image for the appropriate Elevate device okay. and go, go with it. And if I happen to want to elevate new subscribers mm -hmm. from third party sources that have not been elevated, mm -hmm. then I go back and do the original Elevate procedure using a binary dot bin format, upgrade them to Cambium image and then go to 4.3.2, correct? That's correct. Okay, okay. All right, hope that little complicated uh, situation has been explained well. well. We are trying to Simplify. minimize the complications. Yes. So the rule of thumb, go with 432 and everything will be good. For yeah. you. My hair wasn't this gray when I started this. So, <laughs> uh, But yes, we did make an effort and as, as I'm hoping our audience appreciates, the compatibility matrix of different hardware models can be challenging. All right, now let's move on to the next topic. There's a lot of fuss about backwards and forwards compatibility. Mm -hmm. And it was driven by the fact that we wanted to make sure migration happens and investment protection. But there's some good technical juicy stuff in here, right, Dimitri? And can we just go through the features, the benefits that you can potentially see when you replace a 11N based AP with our EPMP 3000? Okay. Okay. Tell me about latency first. Uh Right, so there is no one silver bullet. There are multiple sil silver bullets that, that all contribute, yeah, contribute a little bit. contribute to the um, better performance of EPMP 3000, even with the legacy subscribers. Okay. Obviously, the beauty of EPMP 3000 when it shines, it's with the 11 AC subscribers. Right, multi user MIMO, right. Or higher modulation, etc. But even if you go with the 11 N subscribers, you will get certain benefits. So, one thing is, as you brought it up, it's latency. So, right now with EPMP 3000, we can shoot data right away. Okay. On EPMP 2000, we had to plan frame ahead. Okay. Everything. So the round trip latency on the multipoint system was about 15 milliseconds. With a five millisecond TDD frame. Right. So right now, you can get a l way less, like seven millisecond uh, latency on the unloaded system. So an access from an access point perspective, a 50 percent reduction in latency which right. translates to better performance. So your TCP throughput, uh, both in uplink and downlink, should see some impact. Um, we're not gonna get into actual numbers in today's session just because there's environmental conditions that can vary, but we want you to understand that from a 2,000, 1,000 to a 3,000, you're seeing 50% less latency. That's huge. Right. Okay. What uh, else do we have under the hood? The other thing that obviously contributes to the performance is, and everybody who saw the EPMP 3000, it's yeah. like a bigger thing right. with a bigger radiator in the back. And there is a reason behind it. So it has better CPU. Way it's just not CPU. filled with uh, foam and straw, no? Okay, <laughs> it's, it's real You're electronics. Right. So it's a lot of electronics. And again, by the size of radiator, it consumes power and power goes into the real power of the CPU. Okay. The amount of the data it can consume and send through the air. So the packets per second on the EPMP 3000 is way higher than it used to be on the EPMP 2000. Can I put you on the spot and ask you what that is? Well, the, again, it depends on many circumstances like the number of subscribers and et cetera, et cetera. But long story short, the headline we've get, we are getting is about 100,000 packets per second. Again, depending how you measure it. I'm really used to hearing it depends to most questions <laughs> I ask, by the way. <laughs> okay, so we got high packets. Small little details. <laughs> sure, sure. Changing so we got high packets per second, uh, great latency. And then the fact that the EPMP 3000 has four receive chains um, that has an advantage in the uplink uh, gain, right? Maximum ratio combining, if I'm not mistaken? Right, so we, as you said, we have four chains, so we are listening for two additional antennas, basically, right. with EPMP 3000 comparing to the 2000. And this is with a four by four antenna. Right, right. so it gives you double more power you can receive, more right. energy you can receive. If you're receiving more energy... Your listening you can, capability yeah, has doubled. Yeah, your listening cap capability. Instead of one year, you have basically two years. Yeah. So you, you can listen way better and you can do this MRC thing. Okay. Actually, our ears are also, very similar to this construction. Okay. Uh, 
Great. So uplink. You, you are getting 3 dB better in the uplink. Gotcha. So 3 dB better signal means you will get one level of the modulation, modulation in the uplink. And this is with our 11N subscribers as well as the elevated subscribers. Um, two other points. There's a concept of a short GI and uh, LDPC. Right. Um, terms that doesn't even make sense to me, but yeah, maybe, like maybe yeah. you can give a very brief overview what those can potentially do. Uh, so the short GI stands for the short guard interval. Uh, because all the EPMP products are based on the standard 11N uh, or right now in, on the 11AC uh, chipsets. Right. Uh, we leverage the standard Wi-Fi frames okay. this way. And each Wi-Fi frame, it has the preamble to fight with the reflections, um, with all the uh, propagation issues we have in the uh, sending the OFDM data. We'll so, display something on the video right. uh, uh, to talk a little bit more about what the right. implications. So long story short, uh, with the new standards, Wi-Fi standards, you can decrease the size of the preamble okay. because with the modern hardware, uh, we don't really need that long of the uh, guard interval. Okay. Long story short, it will give you like about 10% of the throughput. Just out of nowhere, with your existing 11N subscribers, you can get more, up to 10% more of uh, Brilliant. throughput. Brilliant, excellent, excellent. Uh, with the existing, okay. just because of this feature. Gotcha. And then there's a linear diversity parity coding, LDPC. I got the acronym right. Um, yeah, I couldn't explain anything beyond that, so, but. Uh, th that's more or less the same thing. It is coming from the Wi-Fi uh, standard base. Okay. And LDPC, uh, it gives you better sensitivity when you transmit and receive. So you transmit with the additional uh, coding. So okay. it's a coding scheme. So the way how you code uh, packets and you add the checksum in the end. Okay. So with the LDPC checksum, you can actually recover some of the data. That gives you better sensitivity on the receiver. In case you lost the data. Yeah, okay. well, in case of the phase shifts and uh, okay. if you take a look at the constellation of the... It's so a little bit of a correction mechanism? Right, okay. it's a correction mechanism. So you can correct some of the errors when you receive and it gives you another 3 dB of the sensitivity on the receiver side. Right. So uh, with MRC and LDPC, it gives you 6 dB of the link budget. But uh, it, yes, but it's important to understand that that link budget may not necessarily, the, the LDPC part of it may not translate to a pure RSSI right, signal right. improvement. Right, it is not the RSSI thing, it's sensitivity part sure, of it. Sure, gotcha. So this is a good, good, uh, good juncture to summarize. Uh, first and foremost, exciting times. Compatibility mode is coming, uh, days away. Um, you're getting compatibility mode, which is going to create a lot of excitement from a migration perspective. However, four key exciting things. Lower latency at the access point, higher packets per second, this feature we call short GI and LDPC. All of this translates to improved performance for your access point and your network simply replacing the AP. Needless to say, the big bang, of course, is as you replace those subscribers, now you're getting multi-user MIMO and higher modulation, which is a whole other session that I hope uh, you guys will come back and listen to. Okay, welcome back. Um, continuation of our last session. Um, this takes us in the backwards compatibility and not just theory this time, we're actually going to look at a live system and see what's going on in this backward compatibility mode. So, Dimitri, what are we looking at? We have a EPMP 3000 access point here. Um, can you tell me what is the mix of subscribers on this? Like flavors? Uh, sure. So one of, the, one of the features we added to the firmware uh, yep. recently is actually the flavor of the subscriber. So ah, model on name. On the right, yeah, you can see the model name. So in our case, we have the whole bunch of different subscribers. There are a bunch of AC, Force 325, Force 316. There are a bunch of Force 200s. They all connectorized radios, five years old. Right. And let me check if we have Well, any. how many subscribers do we have here? Uh, we we have a lot of them. So if wow. you go to the top, we have 80 subscribers right now. 
connected to EPMP 3000. Oh, wow. And then, and then um, this is genuine excitement, by the way, because this is the first time I'm seeing this. So 80 subscribers, and as, I, as you just scan through it, I'm seeing things like uh, Force 300-25, which, interesting enough, also has a MooMimo gain, uh, which, by the way, I think we've removed at a later release. Yeah. And then a mix of Force 180, Force 200. So this is a perfect example of a backwards compatible sector with a mix right. of subscribers. And, and the AC subscribers are represented with not just MooMimo gain, but the groupable STAs. This is, this is superb, okay? So, uh, that, yeah, that's, that's one of the things that, perfect examples, as you said, with all the mix of all the yeah, variety right, right. things that we produced over the years. Um, what else you want to see? Okay, so that is exciting. Um, help me understand something. So this is obviously a live system. We probably don't want to do too many tests. Um, More than that, it is our beta system for the customer that helps us. Sure, a lot sure, to sure, sure. Test sure. the new features and new things. So it's gotcha. running the beta software. No, I think I think this is good. I think uh, maybe what you can show is maybe a throughput chart. I'm just curious with 80 subscribers at a non-busy hour. Right. So as you can probably see from our uh, screenshot right now, it's like 2 p.m. 3 p.m. Right. Thing. It's not the... I believe this is in the West Coast as well, so it's... Yeah, it's about... 12.43. Yeah, no time. So, so about 60, 70 megs uh, of combined Yeah, throughput. you can see the peak of the 160 megs yep. at some point. Uh, but yeah, the, the average is about 100 megs. Right. Uh, throughput. Yeah, probably we can go to the minutes and see if... But this is... Uh, I, think, I think the essence of this uh, segment is really to show our audience that we have a live system here that is not a Cambium Lab system, but one of our friendly customers who's uh, confidently put up 80 subscribers, mix of both uh, new subscribers and uh, existing stuff. Um, I hope this helps to build the confidence and have more customers start deploying our uh, backwards compatibility mode as soon as the software is posted on our website, right? And I believe it is already posted as so okay. People watching this those video. will be uh, our executive producer. Those will be uh, famous last words if something happens and we don't post it on time. <laughs> uh, all right. So I think I probably don't want to go into this too much. I really wanted to see the monitor wireless throughput chart. Um, it's a story in itself. A whole bunch of mixed subscribers running on the network. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you for sharing this. Um, and thank you for joining us again um, as a short follow-on to our previous segment to show a live system. Thank you. Thank you, Dimitri. Thank you.